This tutorial will introduce you to the Greek alphabet, vowels, and diphthongs, their names and how to pronounce them. I will be using the Erasmusian pronunciation for this video. The first letter is alpha. Alpha. A as in father. The second is beta. Eta, pronounced B as in book. Gamma, or gamma, a G as in got. Delta, a D as in desk. Epsilon, or epsilon, E as in pet. Zeta, the DZ as in blades, Zeta. Eta, A as in date. Theta, TH as in think. Following Theta comes Iota. Iota is sometimes, sometimes pronounced I as in bit or E as in ski. It's never pronounced I. Kappa as in kite, the K in kite. Lambda, the L as in lake. Mu, the M as in moon. Nu, the N as in name. Xi, Xi. The X as in X. X, X, C. Omicron. The O as in hot. So a short O sound. P. Pronounced in math pi, but in Greek it's pronounced P. And the name is pronounced P, and the sound is P as in pot. Rho. Sounds like R as in run. Sigma, S as in set. The first sigma is the form that shows up at the beginning or middle of a word, and the form in parentheses is used at the end of a word. It's called the final sigma. Tau, T as in tan. Upsilon, U as in produce. Note the starred comment here at the bottom that gamma is pronounced as a hard G except when it precedes a kappa, ki, xi, or another gamma. Before those letters, it's pronounced as an N. So, for example, double gamma sounds like NG in English. Following upsilon comes phi. Phi is pronounced like a PH as in phase. Key, which looks like an X, is pronounced like a the CH as in chaos. So there's no difference in the Erasmusian pronunciation of the kappa and the key. C is as in the PS in slips. So you have both the P and the S sound pronounced. Omega is the O as in vote, so it's a long sound. It's important to learn the lowercase letters of the alphabet since almost all Greek texts are printed in the lower case today. They must be learned in order, and the name and pronunciation of each needs to be mastered. Since capital letters are relatively infrequent, you don't need to memorize them at this point. In addition to the vowels that show up in the alphabet, Greek combines vowels, like English does, to form one syllable or one sound, and this combination is called a diphthong. There are eight principal diphthongs in Greek, all of which end in the letters iota or upsilon. The first is alpha iota, and that is pronounced I as in Thailand. 
epsilon iota, pronounced A as in weight. Omicron iota, pronounced oi as in boil. Upsilon, or upsilon iota is pronounced we or we as in quit or queen. Alpha upsilon is pronounced ow as in sour kraut. Omicron upsilon is pronounced oo as in coop. And epsilon upsilon or eta upsilon are pronounced U as in Eugene. The vowels alpha, eta, or omega sometimes have an iota written beneath them. It's called an iota subscript. And the subscript does not affect the pronunciation of these letters, so they're still pronounced a, a, and o, but the subscript, the iota subscript, is an essential part of the spelling. Every Greek word that begins with a vowel has a breathing mark over that vowel. And when a word begins with a diphthong, the breathing mark is over the second of the two vowels. What you need to know as a student is uh, that uh, if the breathing mark looks like this, it's a rough breathing mark and is pronounced as an H. And if it looks like this, it's a smooth breathing mark and has no sound. Thus, epsilon nu with a rough breathing mark is pronounced hen, but with a smooth breathing mark, it's pronounced n. So there's no sound to the smooth breathing mark. Almost every Greek word carries one of three kinds of accents. The acute, the circumflex, or the grave. Accents always stand over a vowel. And for now, you should view the accent as indicating which syllable to stress in pronouncing a word. You don't need to know the names of the accents. You just need to recognize that these marks above Greek words indicate where to place the emphasis. Uh, when two vowels, which are normally would form a diphthong, like we've seen up here, are pronounced as separate syllables, two dots called a diaresis are placed over the second vowel. This is similar to the German umlaut. Thus, the word that looks like kein is pronounced kain and not kein because there's uh, the two dots, which I'll zoom in on here so that you can see clearly. The uh, two dots are over the iota, and that tells us to pronounce the alpha separately from the iota. All right, uh, we're going to end the uh, tutorial here with some practice pronouncing the words. I want to encourage you to have practice these before you listen to me pronounce them. So you do your best pause the video, and then when you're ready to hear me pronounce them, uh, turn it back on. Number one, N. Number two, pros. Number three, soon. Number four, un. Number five, doxa. Number six, theos. Number seven, kurios. Kurios. Number eight, Angelos. Remember, two gammas next to each other have an NG sound. Angelos. Nine, Huios. Huios. Ten, Zeteo. Zeteo. Eleven, Dipsao. Dipsao. 12, anthropos, anthropos. 13, baptizo, baptizo. 14, adelphos, adelphos. 15, echo, echo. 16, oikos, oikos. 17, Bino, Bino, 18, Apocteno, Apocteno, 19, Euthus, Euthus, 20, Auxano, Auxano, 
Now I would encourage you to pause the tutorial and try to pronounce your way through John 3.16 and then pause it back on to hear me pronounce it. John 3.16 Hutos gar agapesen hathaas tan kosmon hosta tan huion tan monogene Edokin Hina pas ha pistevon Ais avtan me apoleta al eke zoen eonion. You may have noticed some discrepancies in my pronunciation, and this is because I've adopted a reconstructed first century uh, pronunciation for my on-campus classes and no longer use the Erasmusian pronunciation. However, the Erasmusian pronunciation is uh, the dominant pronunciation in the United States and overseas for English speakers. Uh, just to give you a taste of how this verse would sound with the reconstructed pronunciation, I'll read it for you in that way. Utos gar e gapesen, otha os ton cosmo, osta ton yuion ton monogene edoken, in a paso pistevon isavto, me apolite al eke zoen eonion. As you can hear, uh, the vowel sounds uh, are, are a bit different. I hope this helps you get ready to uh, recognize and read. Greek texts that you see in commentaries or in Bible works. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them on Piazza.